Man Shock are back in business. After last season being shut down due to the pandemic, Spokane's indoor football team is ready to play once again. Eager, I, I think eager, eager to have action. You know, hit somebody else, We're salivating at the mouth to get after it. There is excitement all around for the team as they protect their home turf and hope to make Spokane proud. But it was a long road to get to the Shock's first game. We break down the timeline of events ahead of their matchup against the Frisco Fighters. He's just been, pretty much been my, one of my biggest supporters. Whatever I do or choose to go do, he's behind me 100%. For one running back on the team, football is in his blood. The brother of a former famous Seattle Seahawks player explains how his sibling inspires him to chase his own dreams. Welcome to Crim Spokane Shock Special as the team kicks off their season on our sister station KSKN on Saturday at 7 p.m. I am Brenna Green. This has been over two years in the making as the Shock got bought by owner Sam Adams in 2019 and then their first season back last year was delayed due to COVID. This week we got a look at the Spokane Shock players that made the final roster. Our Brandon T. Jones went to practice on Thursday. Let's take some time to acknowledge the athletes that put their life on hold, move all over the country, and chase a dream they've had ever since they were a child. Many of these players are working hard trying to get to that next level of wherever they can go. Nothing's guaranteed when it comes to arena football. We all sat out a whole entire year. So man, God, Grace got us here to play today. So I'm in the moment, I'm enjoying every bit of it being here. It's been a long year, the COVID, all that and everything, man. What's it like finally getting back out there? Oh, it's uh, it's exciting. I can't wait. You know, it's, it's more so one of them things that we've been talking about for a year. So it ain't really too much more talking to do. You know, it's, it's the day before, the day before. We just can't wait to get to it. The players, the coaches, and everyone in between have been waiting for this moment, but the disappointing news is there won't be any fans in the crowd. The Death Valley and, and what we call the Ninth Man, we need them. Last year got canceled and a lot of fans were asking for refunds. We feel um, working with uh, the governor's office that there is a possibility that we'll be able to have more fans. Team owner Sam Adams says he's trying to correct any issues that have lingered from last season, which means getting a refund for anyone who may have not received one. The arena is still functioning as a vaccine clinic, but there is a possibility that could change and fans might be allowed back in next month. They're holding out and keeping high hopes for that possibility. But for the time being, if you ask these players, they're just ready to get out on the field and take care of the business. Yes, sir. God's grace. Amen, bro. I love to hear that, man. You know, it's got to be a blessing. You know, it's been a while. You know, what was it like mentally, though, you know, over the last year, just not knowing what's about to happen? Draining and like frustrating because you like you be eager you put the work you put the time and you know what you've been doing leading up to the point to play football and being in the best shape that you put yourself in what you put yourself through and it's like ah it's like a disappointment but then you had a whole year to train to get better as well yes, sir. so it's all about the approach and perspective you choose to have yes, sir. when it comes to adversity Amen to that. We also sat down with the Spokane Shock's newest head coach, Billy Back, at Thursday's practice. Like his players said, he's ready to go. Yeah, I like that. You got that. It's here. It's, it's the first time it's been here in about 19 months. It's like a kid before Christmas right now. So it's no surprise the word Billy Back uses to describe his team going into this season. Eager. I, I think eager. Eager to have action. You know, hit somebody else. Salivating at the mouth to get after it. Unfortunately, they'll be getting back to it without fans for game one. That is due to the Spokane Arena being a mass vaccination site and the facility still needing to hire back ushers. The team is hoping to have fans back for their next home game on June 19th. The Spokane fans do bring a little bit different energy than any other place in the, in the country. So when those guys get back in the, in the stands, it's going to be a different atmosphere. And back would know, as his first experience with the Shock was actually coaching against the team in 2017 when his Wichita Falls team came to Spokane. After that game, his mind was made up. I told people if this job ever opened up, I want to take this job, just for the fan base itself, you know, the atmosphere of the city. So we got it, we're here, we're excited. Now it's time to protect home turf. You want to keep the respect factor of the Spokane Shock name. Uh, the colors, you know, everything about it, you know, it's, it, it carries a little bit of weight in the indoor arena world. So, 
know, our job is to keep that, that uh, positivity, that, that respect of it up and uh, win games. And, and uh, hopefully the city of Spokane is proud of this team. As I touched on off the top, a lot has happened to get the shock to their first game from a canceled first season to postponing fan fest. Now, finally, the team will play at the Spokane Arena. Our Brianna Vasquez breaks down the timeline of events. Indoor football back in Spokane was a welcome announcement to all Spokane Shock fans. The team announced its comeback in October of 2019, but then had their season put on hold due to the coronavirus pandemic. On March 12th, the Shock season was suspended. The Indoor Football League announced the 2020 season would be suspended until further notice. Then, a month later, on Monday, April 13th, the IFL announced the season officially canceled, meaning the Spokane Shock season was over. We are playing in 2020. The same day, Spokane Shock owner Sam Adams made it clear that if the government allowed, he would find a way to make indoor football games happen. Adams said the goal was to have the Shock play in 7-10 to 10 games outside of IFL to fill their schedule as exhibition games. We're not going anywhere. I, I made a... I made a 20, 30 year financial investment into Spokane. This just gives me more time to continue to plan, to strategize. On Tuesday, April 14th, Adams spoke with Krem again and made it clear that the IFL had no problem with the shock playing in exhibition games. He already had permission to do so. You know, this allows us to be able to play teams from all over the country, I said. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the type of person that looks at the positive. No games ever occurred, though. On February 17, 2021, the Spokane Shock announced their schedule for the 2021 season. The Shock were originally supposed to kick off their first preseason game on May 8th, but that game was canceled. Instead, Saturday, May 15th would be their first game. The team's first day of training was May 1st. The season had been pushed back to ensure the team could play in front of fans, but as announced on Monday, May 10th, fans will have to wait a little bit longer to see their team in person. Fans will not be in the stands at the arena because it is too quick of a turnaround to convert the mass vaccination site and the Spokane Arena still needs to hire ushers. The Shock also announced that their previously scheduled Fan Fest event for May 12th is being postponed to an unnamed later date. It's been a road of ups and downs, but now it's almost time for the Spokane Shock to hit the field again. In Spokane, Brianna Vasquez, Crime 2 News. The Spokane Shock have a running back on their roster that is the brother of a former famous Seattle Seahawks player. We'll tell you how Beast Mode has inspired the new Shock back right after the break. Welcome back to Krem 2 Spokane Shock Special. I'm Brenna Green. It's time to get to know some of the players. If you look down the Spokane Shocks roster, you'll see a familiar last name. Marshawn Lynch's brother plays for the team. Devonte, like Beast Mode, is a running back. Karthik Finkatraman talked to him about his relationship with his sibling. What is it like being Marshawn Lynch's brother? Uh, I guess a better question would be, to ask him, what is it like being my brother? That kind of sounds like how former Seattle Seahawks running back Marshawn Lynch might answer a question. Well, that is his brother, Devontae Sapp Lynch, who now plays for the Shock, so I guess it makes sense. My brother is crazy, like, personally, he, he's crazy and I love him. The two are close. They talk about every single day. Devontae says Beast Mode is just like we've seen him in press conferences and in pop culture. I'm here so I won't get fined. I'm here so I won't get fined. So while y'all at it right now, take care of y'all bodies. You know what I mean? Don't take care of y'all chicken. I'm just about that action, boss. What is the most entertaining thing he said to you? I'm, oh, excuse my language. Um, I mean, I've, I've been around him my whole life, so there, there's, really no, uh, <laughs> there's really no way I can answer that question and, and, and be and that be the right answer. But unlike us, Devontae has a deeper relationship with Marshawn. That means plenty of football advice as the shock running back chases his own dreams. I just created my lane, branched off from his lane. He's just been, pretty much been my, one of my biggest supporters. Whatever I do or choose to go do, he's behind me 100%. Whether it be going to play over in Germany or play here in the IFL, I'm trying, obviously, I'm trying to climb the ladder, so whatever steps come, he's still going to be behind me 100%. Devontae made the decision to come here. He made the cut, 
and now he hopes to take what his brother taught him so that he can help this team succeed. This opportunity means a lot to him. Honestly, it means everything to me because that's honestly the whole reason I'm doing this in the first place is to continue writing my story. And maybe this season, we'll see Devante's version of Beast Mode. I'm Karthik Venkatraman, Prem2 Sports. Devante says we might just see Marshawn come to a shock game this season to cheer him on. What a thrill that would be. Following along the line of familiar names, if you're a fan of WSU football, you'll notice two in the receiving court. Yes, the air raid has left the Inland Northwest, but two of its former members are back. I caught up with both Tavares, Tavares Martin Jr. and Karen Priester about what it's like to once again play with each other. Oh yeah, this just made the experience a lot more better. Kyron Priester and Tavares Martin Jr. only played two years together in Pullman, but their bond has lasted much longer than their time on the Palouse. We worked out, we trained, we practiced, and you know, we learned a lot of stuff together, so it's just fun to come back out here and do it all over again. We've been friends since, since I met him my freshman year on campus, so I mean, it's definitely a great feel to be playing with him again on the same team. This is only the second time either of them have been in the area since they left WSU. The first time being during the Shocks training camp last year, which didn't result in a season due to COVID. I remember playing in the Palouse, you know, Pullman, it was always fun, you know, playing out there. It's a lot different out here with the, the sightseeing and stuff and things like that. It's a lot slower and stuff from where I'm from, from the city. It feels great to get to show my talent back on the um, Pacific Northwest, you know, and, and not, only, not only for the shock fans, but the, the cool fans. So it, it's, it's going it's to be good. And for the fans who don't know or don't remember Tavares. I plan to put on the show, so. The man who is throwing passes to Tavares and Kyron is on the brink of IFL history. Charles McCullum is close to breaking the Indoor Football League record for all-time passing yards. It won't be long before his name is atop the record books. Karthik spoke to him on how special that would be. It'll mean the world to me. Like, you, you work your whole life for something to be great and try to be great at something, and then it's right in front of you for grabs. It's not a matter of whether Spokane shot quarterback Charles McCollum will break the IFL all-time passing record. It's just a matter of when. All he needs is 1,222 yards through the air. What do you think your reaction will be when you eclipse that? I'll probably cry. I'm a crier. I'm not afraid of shame, shame to say it. I cry all the time. I talk to my buddy. We have heart-to-heart -heart talks. I talk to some of the people I don't even know and we be crying. I have tears in my eyes. McCollum is quite the accomplished player. He's also won two IFL MVPs, but the individual achievements aren't really his main goal anymore. I mean, I'll take it if they give it to me, but it's not my goal. My goal is to get the ring. If we get the ring, everybody else can have the accolades. I'll, I'll be fine and ride off in the sunset with a championship. Somebody on my team can get it. I don't care. Whoever. Why do we win? He's never won an IFL title, so there's really two goals that he's trying to set this season. This championship or bust, and we're not. We, we might well just go home right now. We don't have championship aspirations. We can wrap it up, put everything back, and we can just go. COVID part two, we can leave. You know, but it's championship or bust around here. And the people feel it, we feel it, and we're going to try to make it happen for the community. He feels this team is loaded with talent, and he's putting the Indoor Football League on notice right now. You have to come to Spokane. You want to win? You have to beat Spokane Shop. And if not, sorry for you. What a character. There will not be any fans at the Spokane Shocks opening game like we've said, but the hope is to have fans at the arena later on in the season. Coming up after the break, how the Spokane Arena is planning on switching from a mass vaccination site into a sports venue. Welcome back to Crumb 2 Spokane Shock Special. I'm Brenna Green. Allowing fans into shock games has more to it than just getting approval from the governor's office. Nicole Hernandez spoke with the Spokane Arena about how much planning has to go into switching the arena from a mass vaccination site into a sporting venue. For months now, the arena has been a COVID-19 testing and vaccination site while also hosting Spokane Chiefs games. Juggling that made the transition to arena football games pretty simple. The plans were already in place. Everything vaccination related on the concourse and anything game related on the field. Separate entrances and everything. That worked for just running the games. But now the arena is working to fit fans into the picture too. We can start picking the, the, the vaccination site up and, 
and setting it outside now in the parking lot. And we can have a drive up vaccination site and have all the same logistics going on that we do indoors, but outside now. Doing that opens up the concourse for the arena football fans, but it takes time to make that happen between getting staff ready, ordering food and creating a new ticket system. We need to know when this is going to hit. You can't just give us it's open and then expect us to open the next day because it's literally impossible. That's why there's no fans for Saturday's game. The plan is for the arena to open to fans at some point in June, as long as restrictions from the state allow it. The arena said vaccinating the community is still their number one priority, but there won't be any overlap between games and normal vaccine appointments. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, CREM2 News. The good news is, is that if you aren't able to go to the shot game, you can watch it on our sister station, KSKN. No fans at that game, like we've said several times now. But what about fans last year who had already paid for the whole season when the pandemic hit? Many fans just rolled over their tickets to this year's season and therefore didn't have to pay any money for this year's games. However, some season ticket holders did ask for their money back as funds were tight due to the pandemic. Can't blame them there. According to Sam Adams, fans that asked for a refund from last season have been refunded. We have had people getting refunds since the beginning of the pandemic. Not everyone has those issues. Some do. We were able to work those out. And so well, we're extremely happy to be able to get them their refunds because we know that they needed it in the pandemic. For anyone who hasn't been refunded from last season, they are asked to send Adams a direct email. The Spokane Shock have made community service a part of their team bonding during training camp. How goats! played a role in that up next. Welcome back to Creme 2 Spokane Shock Special. I'm Brenna Green. We are going to end this special on a fun note. The Spokane Shock delivered baby goats as part of the Wishing Star Foundation's You've Been Goated campaign. The campaign encourages people who have been delivered a goat to donate money to help with the foundation's goals of granting wishes to children with serious illnesses. Our photographer, Jeff Bollinger, brings us this piece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really important for us to do uh, the community service, uh, mostly because it gets us with our fans and, and with people in the community. They, they make a different noise. I have no idea what kind of noise they make. <laughs> so we want our Wish Kids to partner up with the shop to go see a game, to uh, bring them some joy, meet you guys. We'd love to do a meet and greet, meet you guys, get the kids to shake your hands and watch a game and continue to support Wishing Star. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, you know, no pun intended, it is a culture shock. Um, this was the first time I've ever held a goat. I'm sure the same thing for my teammates. Um, you know, I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up inner city kid. Uh, so, you know, holding a goat and, and being able to feel what, a, you know, another animal feels like, is, it was also pretty cool as well. Um, never got that and didn't know what the foundation was about. Um, really like their mission statement and how they, how they do things as well. Um, so I'm really happy we got to have that uh, interaction with them as a team. Our guys had a great time with that. You know, my, my wife's parents raised baby goats back home in Ohio, so you know, it was kind of neat seeing that. But uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're all about the community. And we also did um, a hand sanitizer uh, give. So we also were doing that, and we were you know, another way of, of getting involved in the community, right? And seeing people and interacting with people. Even though we didn't have a season, we were still able to interact with legitimate fans um, because they would come and they would talk to us and they were really involved with us even though we weren't playing football. That we're, we're not just here to play football, we're here to interact with everybody that's here. Um, and we are looking to you know, make the community a better place in any way that we can. We're gonna be out and about and, and do our part with the community and, and, and hopefully get fans in the stands and, you know, and, and be around. Well, that made me just feel all of the warm and fuzzy things. If you're watching this special on Friday night, be sure to tune in to KSKN tomorrow at 7 p.m. for the Shock's first game of the season against Frisco. If you're watching this on Saturday, stick around as the game is just about to kick off. Thank you for watching, and we hope you tune in to Shock Games on KSKN all year long.